Hello, I was looking at the documentation for Arduplane Auto Takeoff and it's actually not too complicated so I thought I might give it a go. Um, this is the main page here, it says the basic idea is for the autopilot to set the throttle to maximum and climb until a designated altitude is reached. Um, and there's a whole lot of information here, I'll let you read that in your own time, but um, important point to note here is that the takeoff direction is set from the direction the plane is pointing when the automatic takeoff command is started. So you need to point the plane in the right direction, then switch to auto mode. Um, what it does not say here, which I probably should say, but um, I have picked up from watching other YouTube videos, is that you also need to raise the throttle above zero. So put the throttle to about halfway at that point. And then I'm going to try hand launching, so I'm just going to look at the uh, parameters for that. It's not actually that many of them and most of them you can leave as the defaults I think. Actually I'll have a look at that in a second. But there's only these ones there. Um, they're explained here but they're also explained on the settings page here. There's quite quite good descriptions here so I'm just going to look at this while I go through it. Uh, so we have takeoff throttle min acceleration. So this is a value that will be read from the accelerometer, so minimum forward acceleration in meters per second per second before arming the ground speed check in auto takeoff. So the ground speed check is what we'll look at in a second. Uh, this is meant to be used for hand launches where you're throwing it. Setting this value to zero disables the acceleration test. I don't really want to do that because it says it means then the ground speed check will be used um, which could allow GPS velocity jumps to start the engine. So I have noticed this with my quadcopters that sometimes the position of the quad will jump by a few meters all of a sudden and if that was to happen the plane would think it has been thrown and the motor would start up. So we don't really want to do that. So I'm going to set it to a um, recommended value here for hand launches and bungee launches. This should be set to around 15. So that's 15 meters per second speed change in one second. That should be pretty easy to do with a normal throw. Um, next one is the min speed which was just mentioned above there. So this is a minimum ground speed in meters per second which must be exceeded before the throttle can be uh, enabled. And again I'll just go with the... Um, was there a rec recommended? Pretty sure there was a recommended. Here we go. This parameter uh, to be set to value no less than 4 meters per second to provide additional protection against premature motor start. So if you accidentally sort of bump the plane or shake it a little bit while you're walking around before you throw it, um, it might start the motor. But if you have this check running as well, it'll make sure that the plane is actually moving at 4 meters per second in some direction before it actually starts the motor up. Um, takeoff throttle min speed was, oh that's what we just did, uh, takeoff throttle delay was what I was looking for here. Uh, this parameter sets the delay in tenths of a second that the ground speed check is delayed after the forward acceleration check uh, controlled by these other two. Um, it is essential that this value is set to no less than 0 0.2 seconds or 2 which would be the def default, I think it's the default there. I was playing around with this yesterday, I might have changed this, but I think the default would be two, I'm not sure. Uh, to ensure that the aircraft is safely clear of the thrower's arm before the motor can start. So given that we're also going to be checking for uh, these two things here, I think it's pretty safe just to leave this on the minimum. Uh, <laughs> I'll put it up to three tenths of a second before that check runs. Uh, I'm going to be throwing this from a raised mound, so I'll be standing about a meter and a half above the surrounding ground. So I should be able to give it a little bit longer before um, doing all these checks because I'll have a little bit of altitude advantage. Uh, so that's those three. Take off throttle max, and this is the maximum throttle that it can use during this process. And I <clears throat> have set the normal throttle max value to 80 because I've been flying this plane quite a lot and I. I don't think I've ever had to use 100% throttle, like never. So I set it to 80 for normal, you know, mission mode. Um, for takeoff, I might like to give it a little bit more, so I'm going to give it 90% there. Actually, maybe 100 would be prudent, but anyway, I'll go with 90. And then right parameters. Oh, and just looking at this page again, one thing I skipped over was 
to cause the plane to execute a takeoff, add a nav takeoff command to your mission. Obviously, that uh, is quite important too. Otherwise, the plane doesn't know what it's supposed to be doing. So on the flight plan tab, I will add. There's no no mission set up at the moment, and I'm going to make this command a takeoff. Was it nav takeoff? Add a nav takeoff. Well, I only see takeoff in this options list, so I want to try that. All right, takeoff. Um, and then the altitude is going to be 80, so that's it's going to climb up to 80 meters. And the pitch angle is, I'm going to set that to be 15, so that's the climb angle that it's going to try and meet. Did I mention that? So, yeah, the value between 10 and 15 degrees is recommended for most aircraft for the minimum pitch control, uh, which tells it how steeply it should climb. Um, so then I'm going to write waypoints and go and give it a try. Now as far as automatic landing goes, this is not something that I think I'll ever be using, but in the interest of sort of exploring what Arduplane has to offer, I thought I might just give it a try just at least once. Um, and there's a few more settings here that I'm not actually going to look at in this video because I didn't really set any of them. Um, I'll just let you look at this page I suppose. Um, and I'm going to use the defaults and it just says to land the plane you need to add a nav land command to the end of your mission indicating the position and altitude of your desired touchdown point. In most cases the altitude should be zero. This is how I've set up the mission to try auto landing. So I have the takeoff, that's what we just saw before, going up to 80. And then waypoints 2 and 3 are a few hundred meters downrange and they're going to be 70 and 60 meters. And then we're going to come roughly north up to waypoint 4 which is at 6 meters high. Let me just straighten that up a little bit. Oops. And so this is 6 meters high and then this is altitude 0 and it is of type land. Um, and you can see here the gradients there. So the first long stretch is going to be minus 15 degrees um, grade, gradient, whatever you call it, slope. And then the last little bit is going to be about half of that. And there is a fence here which is why I wanted to make it 6 meters above at that fence as it goes over. Uh, I think six meters should be enough. I don't know if this is going to work, but uh, we'll see. All right, so I've come outside here and uh, there might be a couple of small issues. One is that the wind is coming this way, so the plane is facing into the wind at the moment, over there, but my landing strip is down there. So it's going to be about a 90 degree crosswind. And I've looked around and because of these trees here and the power lines going along there, there's not really any other nice way to land coming into the wind, so I'm just going to get it to do this 90 degree crosswind landing and see how it handles it. Um, the other issue, I can't remember what the other issue was now, but uh, it'll probably come to me in the middle of the flight. So I have the plane armed like this, and you can see it's ready to spin. This is just in manual mode. So I want it to, I don't really want it to take off directly into the wind because there's power lines there. So I'll set it to go that way a little bit more. It's still mostly into the wind. And uh, switch to auto mode. And then, <laughs> hope this works, because if it doesn't, the plane is going to hit that fence. And I know this because I've done it before. Ah, so throttle up to halfway. And throw. Ah! Look at that! Beautiful! Wow, that's a steeper climb than I thought it was going to be. Okay, so that looks like about the correct altitude there. Sorry, you probably can't see it. <laughs> but it just climbed up to... I set it to 70 actually, not 80, because that first waypoint is 70. There you go, it's turning around. Oh, this is a... I don't think it's had enough time to figure out which way the wind is blowing. Now it's figured it out. <laughs> okay, so it's coming in along there at rather an angle, obviously, but it is holding the track fairly well. Altitude is too low. Oh, shit. Why did it go so low? Maybe I'm just pushing my luck trying to do this 90 degree crosswind landing. 
Ah, what am I going to do? This wind sucks. Maybe what I should do is just let it circle a few times in return to home, like just circle around the home point so that it can figure out how the wind is behaving so that it can um, react appropriately when it's trying to do the landing. Okay, I've revised my mission so that the landing is going to be going into the wind as much as reasonably possible. And I noticed that there's a sort of a gap in the trees where I think there's a dead tree there and it fell over or something and the the altitude of this row of trees drops down quite a bit there. So I'm try, trying to make it pass across here. That's going to be 40 meters. Um, 50 meters, hopefully I'll still be able to see it at that point because uh, around about here I'm going to have to decide whether to bail or not. Uh, I left it way too long just before and I... I should have um, aborted much earlier. Um, and then we're going to go from 40 to 8 metres here, which is really pushing it, because this, is, this field is only about 80 metres across in this dire direction. Uh, and then we're going to go from 8 metres to zero there. And I, again, I have my doubts about how this is going to work. Um, not really expecting too much, but let's give this a try. See that gap in the trees there, or the dip? So the plan is for it to come over there and land just sort of in front of those other trees there in this field. I don't know, 40 meters, eight meters, zero meters. It's gonna be a bit of a stretch, but the wind is, it's actually dropped off a little bit, but it's still, <laughs> still fairly appreciable amount of wind coming along. Uh, so, let's get this right. Are we armed? We are armed. So we go auto. And then raise the throttle, pick it up carefully, give it a good throw, hands off. Oh. I changed the uh, climb slope to 10 degrees, so I'm going to put it into return to home here. And it's going to climb up to 80 meters there. And actually, now that I've put the um, now that I've put the landing slope into the wind, this is probably not quite so important. But I thought I might just let it do a couple of circles and return to launch, so that it can build up a picture of which way the wind is blowing. Because I think it needs a little bit of time, and it needs to go in a full circle a couple of times to do that. Hey, can you see those two planes up there? Look how closely they're crossing each other. Two passenger jets, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> I've only ever seen one at a time, but there were two passing right next to each other. Um, I've been fiddling with a lot of other parameters to try and get the efficiency up a bit, because in that first video that I showed you a few days ago, it was drawing like 20 amps or something sometimes and it was just quite unreasonable amount of power just to fly around in a circle uh, so where I've got it at the moment it flies a lot slower as you can see especially heading directly into the wind right now but it's um, only using about five to maybe seven or eight amps in most cases all right so here I'm going to switch it back into... Actually, I might let it get a bit closer to the trees there. Okay, we're back in auto mode. So it should be heading for the waypoint over there. And I'm going to get ready to bail if it gets a bit low on these trees, which it kind of is. I think it'll be okay. No, it will not. Alright, return to home. <laughs> Ah, uh, why did it get so low? Those trees can't be 40 meters high. Come on. Okay, auto again. Uh, <laughs> what is it doing? Okay. Okay, I'm just going to let it land there. Oh, not bad, not bad. Yep, yeah, that's good. So I guess what happened there is because it had already meet, uh, met the first waypoint, <coughs> the 50 meter waypoint just behind the trees, when I switched it into 
auto mode here, it just went straight for this 40 meter one just in front of the trees. Uh, and it didn't actually go all the way to it because of the waypoint radius. So it just sort of got close enough. And it was nice that I could see it the whole time because it was on this side of the trees. And then it just did the rest of it okay. A little bit of a steep slope, but um, I'm sure nothing will be broken and it landed like it was supposed to. So it's quite easy, isn't it? Okay, well since I still have some daylight left, I think what I might do is try that again. But I'll launch it from here and I'll just see if I can compare how close it comes each time. Maybe put something to mark this spot and see where it comes next time. Um, although I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to reset the mission now because I've noticed some inconsistencies in the way that it handles missions. If you, um, if you put a re return to launch command at the end of the mission, it seems like the mission never completes because when you switch in and out of auto mode after finishing the mission, it just does return to launch like it's never that return to launch command never is it never is able to finish that one um, whereas if you don't have a return to launch at the end of the mission and you just have a waypoint at the end uh, it considers the mission to be complete and then when you switch back into auto mode again switch out and in to auto mode it sort of resets the mission and does it again so I'm hoping that's what's going to happen when it lands otherwise I'm going to have to walk all the way back there and reset the mission um, but is hoping I don't need to do that. Uh, so I just noticed it landed on top of this large cow shit with the tuft on one side. So that's going to be the point for comparison. And this time I want to launch going... I don't really want to launch there, although that is the good, good direction. So I'm going to just launch it out that way. Um, so auto. Uh, throttle up it's halfway I'm not sure if I should put this down or not should I put it down what's the worst can happen it's just gonna land over there somewhere right all right no transmitter in my hand launching oh shit <laughs> I really hope that the mission is reset now so I came into my flight plan and re-uploaded it just to make sure that it's like a new mission or it thinks it's a new mission even though I changed the altitude five meters higher here on these two and uh, just to try and get it over those trees a little bit easier. Okay I walked back out to my favorite cow shoot again and I'm pretty sure the mission should be reset so I'll try what I was doing before and it should auto launch. By the way the other reason I wanted to stand here while I was doing this is that I should be able to see it through this gap in the trees. So one thing I thought about before is that it may have actually been okay but because from my position there I couldn't see it through the trees I didn't want to let it continue without com being able to see that it was okay. Uh, so from here I should be able to see that a bit better although my depth perception won't let me see whether it's in front of the trees or behind them but it shouldn't matter because I can see whether it's going to hit them right. <laughs> anyway so it's facing that way uh, auto mode, throttle up Transmitter there. Please start this time. Oh, and uh, I'll just switch it into return to home straight away. Wow, it wasn't climbing much there, was it? Maybe those trees are like 50, 55 meters tall or something. Oh, that's interesting. Looks like the home point is on that mound still. I thought it would have been here. Yeah, I think um, one problem that I'm having is I haven't really set up a long approach. And what I'm doing to get it to go over to the landing strip uh, mission here is I'm just switching it out of return to launch at a time when it's kind of facing that way already. But what I should be doing is setting up some longer points to make sure that the plane is facing the right way as it goes through each mission point, each waypoint. Um, but I didn't really want to do that because, like I said, I can't see past those trees very well and there's people's houses and stuff over there too. So anyway, uh, oh, I kind of missed, the, missed my chance now, didn't I? Okay, auto. So it's going to descend from 80 meters to 60 meters there. Then it's going to be 55, 45, 8, and 0. It's 
getting pretty low. That's not going to work. So next time it should be just trying to make the waypoint in front of the trees like it did last time. And hopefully that will be alright. So I'll put it into auto there. This time it's going to drop from 80 meters to 45 meters, which is quite a lot. But it is coming down in front of the trees, that's good. Yep, okay, this is good. So this is the, uh, this is the shit. Uh, not bad. Okay, so... <laughs> It's not bad, I mean, it's what, is it 10, 12 metres? I mean, you can't expect a whole lot better than that when you, like, the approach was like this and then it did a 90 degree turn to come over here. And it's trying to get from 45 metres to zero in, like, about 70 to 80 metres of horizontal distance. So it's uh, a little bit unreasonable thing to ask of it, but it managed to land it without breaking anything. Um, so it works. Now having said that though, I don't think I'm ever going to be really using this again. Um, I much, much prefer just to land the thing manually. I mean, if you can get the return to launch to bring it back to you, that's like 90%, well that's 100% of the job done as far as I'm concerned. I just want to land it manually myself every time. Um, unless I have a runway or something where I can uh, you know, have a lot of room and uh, it actually makes sense to to land it, you know, a big plane with undercarriage and all that kind of stuff. So the only reason I really did this was because Uncle Gary dared me to try uh, auto take off and auto land, and I fell for the dare. What's the matter? Chicken? So I gave it a try. I thought I might as well. I mean, even if I break the plane, it's not a flash plane or anything like that, but nothing was broken, so that's all good. Anyway, I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching.